and welcome to Bethel's live Sunday service. As you can see, I'll be your host today, William L. West, and I want to thank you for taking out this time to be with us for another Sunday. As you know, our leadership here is Pastor Roderick R. Caesar III, joined by his First Lady, Stephanie Caesar. Now, I know this week has been quite an interesting week, but uh, we're going to put that aside and we're going to enter into some praise and worship, and we're going to have a great message from our pastor. Now, before we get into that, we have a few announcements that we want to let you know about and different ways that you can engage with Bethel and the community. Now, to start, you know that we have our 6 a.m. prayer. 6 a.m. is every day, and it's also 12 o'clock on Wednesdays. The Zoom information is at the bottom, and it's a great way where you can bring something to the Lord and pray in a group if that's what you like. And uh, it's, it's very supportive, and it's a way everybody can join in and go before, go before the Lord in prayer. On Tuesdays, we have our soup kitchen. That's from 12 to 2 p.m. We'll be feeding the neighborhood. And that's, uh, you know, hot food. We start cooking real early for that. So uh, if you want to come, let the, let the neighborhood know that we're going to be available there. And on Wednesdays, we also have our pantry. Now, that's from 9.30 to 12 p.m. You got to line up a little bit earlier for the pantry. We're going to give you some fresh fruit, some canned goods. And again, that's another way where we engage with our immediate community. Um, we do have a need. If you know how to chop a vegetable, if you've ever put fresh fruit or canned goods in a bag, we need your assistance. Many hands make light work. Now, this is something pretty cool. If you have a child who is a senior, or if you are a senior yourself watching, a senior in high school, if you come out and help us, we can also give you credit for community service that will go on your resume for college. So if you want to take advantage of that, it's a win-win situation. Community service and making sure that resume is really good for college. Now, after that, we have uh, Thursdays. Thursdays, our Transformation Bible Study. That starts at 7.30. And on Friday, I wish I had Rhonda here with me. She does the Good Global. Our pastor, Rod, is global. He's global on Global 7 TV. That's global7.tv. So join in on Fridays and check him out. Now, what I would like to let everybody know and spread the word that our ministries are back, our youth ministries. So Imago Day starts at, on Tuesdays at 7.30 p.m. And that is on Zoom. Next, we have our Joppa. That's from 7th grade to, to 12th grade. Job is back. That's today, Sunday. Today, Sunday at 12 noon, Job is back. Also, we have our Kids for Christ. We also have Sunday School, which is also today. Starts at 12 noon. We're all back. Please join us on Zoom. The information is at the bottom. You can contact the church office if you want your child to be a part of that. My kids are. It's a great way to still stay connected and let them learn about about Christ, God, and the Bible, uh, you know, because they're not getting it throughout the week. And we're just happy that Bethel has our social media and our Zoom uh, avenues ready and up. So please spread the word. Those things are back. Now, um, again, we're going to go into some praise and worship. We're going to get a great message on this communion Sunday, on this first Sunday of October. So let's put everything else aside that we had during the week and let's join in. All right, let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to come before you, to praise your name, to worship you, to hear from you, Lord God. We pray and we thank you, Lord, that, we will, that you will open up the minds of all those that are listening and let your spirit and your will enter our hearts and minds. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Yeah. 
just want to give God praise this morning. We want you to continue to praise the Lord with us. For God inhabits the praises of his people.
We've been reading from the book of Psalms. So today we're going to read from the book of Psalms chapter 40. I'm going to give you a minute to find the book, chapter 40. Hallelujah. Amen. I waited patiently for the Lord. He inclined to me and heard my cry. He drew me up from the pit of destruction out of the miry bog and set my feet upon a rock making my steps secure hallelujah he put a new song in my mouth somebody come on a song of praise to our god many will see and fear but their trust and put their trust in the lord blessed is the man who makes the lord his trust is the lord your trust this morning who does not turn to the proud hallelujah to those who go astray after all lie you have multiplied oh lord my god your wondrous deed your thoughts towards us none can compare with you i will proclaim and tell of them yet they are more than can be told in sacrifice and offering you have not delighted but you have given me an open ear but offering and sin offering you have not required then i said behold i have come in the scroll of the book it is written of me i delight to do your will oh my god your law is within my heart it is law within your heart this morning i have told the glad news of deliverance in the great congregation hallelujah somebody behold i have not restrained my lips as you know O oh lord i have not eaten your deliverance within my heart i have spoken of your faithfulness and your salvation I have not concealed your steadfast love and your faithfulness from the great congregation. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I know you can't come to the altar this morning, but there's an altar in your home, so we invite you to come and pray with us. Whatever need you have, bring it to the altar of the Lord. Father, we thank you. We thank you for the need of your people this morning. Who is like unto you? You are the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the ending. The one who is able. We come to thee, God. The God, the beginning, the end, the Alpha, the Omega. And Father, we thank you for today in the name of Jesus. We bring the need of the people before you. Anyone that needs healing in their body, Lord, we pray even this communion Sunday. Touch them. We remember what you did on Calvary. We remember, oh Lord, the great work you did. How you shed your blood for us on the cross of Calvary. Lord, we pray for our nation. Touch our nation, oh Lord. Help us out of this great pandemic, this plague, oh Lord. Remember the blood. Remember the remnant, oh Lord. You said you will not forget the remnant, oh Lord. Your people are here. Touch your body. Wherever you have pain in your body, remember the word. Remember the blood. He was bruised for your iniquity. The shed tithes of his peace was laid upon you upon him father we thank you we thank you O oh lord for our children touch our children touch a youth ministry O oh lord do a new thing today lord we pray we thank you for the service O oh lord we thank you for a mighty touch a mighty move of the spirit invite the holy spirit to your room invite the holy spirit to your bedroom wherever you are call him the lord is with you in that situation father we thank you for your presence we thank you for your holy spirit the spirit of power that dwell within us quicken oh lord quicken oh lord stir up the gift within you father we thank you we bless you in the mighty name of jesus begin to worship the lord and thank him thank the lord for what he has done do not hide the testimony i do not hide the testimony father we thank you hallelujah somebody i can hear you come on people of god hallelujah somebody thank you jesus hallelujah glory 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 we want to thank you, Reverend Sherry, for those powerful words and beautiful prayer. Thank you. Thank you. And at this point, we want to, uh, we want to engage in a ministry that everybody can be a part of. That's the giving ministry. Now, for the scripture today, I have Proverbs 28, 7. And it reads, He hath giveth unto the poor shall not lack, but he that hideth, hideth his eyes shall have many a curse so we want we want to always remember that the bible is a book of promises so we must continue to give and we must continue to look for people to give to so of course here we give to our church we give to our ministries that we have here but also 
on your other days that you're throughout the week, people that you see that need, give. God continues to promise that those who give will get back. So we want to continue to let you know that the Bible is a book of promises and it's our job to apply them. And it also applies to giving. So at this point, for uh, those of us that are going to give to Bethel, remember we have two ways. We have push pay and you can also text to 77977. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to give, Lord God. We thank you for the jobs and for the income that you have provided us with. We thank you, Lord God, that you have blessed us to be a blessing. We ask you, Lord God, for everyone that is giving, that they give joyfully, Lord, as you love a joyful giver. Lord, that they will give from their bounty, Lord God, and pray that the monies that they give will go to the ministries that need and to the neighborhood, Lord God, that surrounds us, that needs, Lord God, our presence in it. We thank you for everyone that chooses to give, and we ask you to provide a means for everyone who wants to give. In your name we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord for having something to give this morning. Have you ever been in a situation when he made a way for you? A way out of no way when your back was against the wall? When if he did not come through for you, you would not even be alive today? Hallelujah. Come on and worship God. Give him a praise. When he made a way when there was no way, no way, no way out. And he came through because he promised he would never leave us or forsake us. Hallelujah. We bless your name, oh God. Hallelujah. You made a way. Hallelujah. When our backs were against the wall. And it looked as if it was over you made a way. Hallelujah. And I'm standing here only because you made a way. Oh, you bless him right now where you are for that way that he made. Oh, you made a way when my back was against the wall when our backs were against the wall and it looked and like it, looked it, it was, was over you made a way and we're standing here and we're standing here only because you him wherever you are for that way that he made a dark place oh you made a way was your back ever against the wall when our back was against the wall and it looked like it, looked like it was over you you made a way hallelujah and I'm standing here only because one more time, you come on. Made you made a way. You made a way. When my back, your back, when our backs were against the wall, and it looked like devil had won. As if it was oh, you made a way. Oh, but we're standing, we're standing, and, and we're standing only because. Only because You call the wall with your power, with your power, perform miracles. There is nothing that's impossible, and we're standing here only because. Come on and sing it. Oh, you move mountains. Oh, yes. You call. Oh, oh, oh. 
How many of you know that the blood still works? The blood still works. If you believe that, raise your hands and give God praise. Even in this sanctuary, even in your homes, give God praise. The blood still, the blood still. Tell your neighbor, tell your husband, tell your daughters, tell your brothers. The blood still works. The blood still works. Clap your hands, clap your hands, clap your hands. Simulate it, simulate it in the
Praise the Lord, we can say today that the blood still works. One songwriter said, The blood that Jesus shed for me way down on Calvary shall never lose its power. It reaches the highest mountain and it flows to the lowest valley. We are thankful today that the blood of Jesus Christ covers us, protects us, and empowers us to live the victorious life. Let's continue to celebrate and give God thanks and praise for being the God that he is in our lives. The word of the Lord says that we should bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continually be in our mouths. Let's make it our business to make praise a prerequisite of all of the expressions that emanate from our lives each and every day. As we are standing before you this morning, as we look to the Lord, we're going to go to the Word of God. And I'm going to ask you to take your Bibles and turn with me in the Word to Philippians chapter 4. For the past month, we've been dealing with the book of Philippians. We've examined it from many angles. We've heard many expressions from the expositors who have stood before us here on Sunday. And this, perchance, will be the last... Uh, indulgence into uh, Philippians. I'm not quite sure what direction the Lord will give our pastor, but I'm going to share with you from Philippians chapter 4 and verses 6 and 7, where the word of the Lord says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God that passes all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. From that text, we're going to look at the importance of having peace in troubled times. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity once again that's been extended to us to be together and to celebrate you in this way. It is our prayer, it is our desire that this will draw us closer to you and that it will empower us to be victorious in all of the challenges that we experience in this life today. Teach us to walk by faith. Teach us to trust you and to take your word as truth and apply it to our lives. I pray for encouragement for those who are discouraged. I pray for strength for those who are weak. And I pray for direction for those who seek it. That each one of us will conclude with having said, it's been good to be in the presence of the Lord. Do it for us and we'll thank you as we ask it in your name. Amen. When we consider the world that we're living in today, we recognize that we're living in a time of many uncertainties and many stresses. People are stressed beyond what they would consider their capacity to function in a normal manner. We are bombarded with news of terrible things happening all around the world. When we listen to the news, instead of simply being informed, it sometimes alters our level of uh, sensitivity and consciousness. We hear about the fires in California. We hear about the famine in uh, other parts of the world. We hear about uh, so many tumultuous situations that are overtaking us. We really don't know quite what to do or how to handle it. There are many people who are feeling anxious about all kinds of things. And the question is, how can we find peace in such a time as this? How can we find safety and security in times like this in which we live? We are living in a time when many uncertainties and stresses overtake us. The economy is adversely affected and there are people losing their jobs in record numbers. We would have thought as we began the year 2020 that it was going to be a year filled with blessing and prosperity. But when we look at what's taking place in this year, well, one right after the other, month after month after month, we have been bombarded and assailed with situations that have literally taken us all by surprise. We uh, see the economy, how it has affected us. We are dealing with corona, the virus, this pandemic that has gripped the life of uh, so many people. Who would have thought in January that we would have lost 200,000 people in this nation to this pandemic situation. It just literally blows our mind. And as we're bombarded with this news, as these things are taking place, I would say it's no wonder why so many people are feeling anxious about life today. But I'm thankful to say that God has an answer. No matter what the challenge, no matter what the problem, no matter what we face, 
God has an answer. And the answer was found in our text verse where it said, don't be anxious about anything. Be careful for nothing. But in every situation, in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, make your request be made known unto God. And the God of peace, which transcends all understanding, will guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Don't be anxious. One songwriter put it very succinctly when he said, don't worry, be happy. The Lord does not want us to become anxious. The Lord said, even though we live in a world that we don't belong in this world as it were, because we're in it, but not of it. We see the challenges that are faced by people every day. We face them ourselves. But we're not going to let the evil of the day or the challenges of the day overtake us to the extent that we lose our focus. Our focus is always to be on the Lord. One songwriter said, turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of the earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and his grace. So we live in this world very definitely, but we don't belong here. We are, we are citizens of heaven. We are sojourners. We are ambassadors. And we are traveling to that city called heaven. And we are to live in this world and wear it as a loose garment as our light shines for the Lord Jesus Christ. Because the word of God lets us know we are to be salt and we are to be light. We are to influence this world with the good of God. We're not to become enmeshed in the world's systems to the extent that it robs us of our peace and of our sanctity. The call is for each and every one of us to live and rise above the circumstances. Because the word of God tells us in Romans chapter 8 and verse 37 that we are more than conquerors through our Lord Jesus Christ. Now if the word of God says you're more than a conqueror, you need to walk and live like it. Don't wait for situations to change. Be a conquering individual in your spirit, in your heart, in your mind. And as you live it out and flesh it out each and every day, you will begin to create the victory that God has spoken of that he's already promised to give each and every one of us. Anxiety or, or as it were, uncertainty uh, are one of the indicators that a person feels insecure about this life and that they have to fiend for themselves. But I want you to know that that's the way the indigent will think. That's the way the hopeless and the helpless will think. But we know that we have a help and a hope in the Lord Jesus Christ. And he is more than able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we could even ask or think. If God has made you a promise, I want you to hold on to the promise of God. Another songwriter said, hold to God's unchanging hand. Build your hope on things eternal, but hold to God's unchanging hand. Because God is immutable. He does not change. And if God has made you a promise, he's going to keep his word. He is not a man that he should lie. He's not going to tell you something that is untrue and have you building a false hope. Everything that God speaks is yes and amen. And he tells us that we are not helpless, but we are the children of God. Now, when you know that you're a child of God, you should recognize the power and the authority that comes with that position. Because your father is the creator of heaven and earth. And if he has the power to do that and to sustain us each and every day, he has the power to give you victory over every circumstance that enters into your life. The Lord tells us that we are not helpless children because we do have a heavenly father and he loves us and he cares for us. How much does God love you? Well, the word of God says he commanded his love toward you and that while you were yet sinners, he sent his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, to die on a cross for you and for me. He gave the best that he had so that we today can know the joy and the peace of having our sins forgiven. He loves us, he cares for us, and he wants us to trust him. Now, if we're going to trust him, we have to take him at his word no matter what the situation that we face looks like. We don't have to see the sun shining and everything going our way to trust him. We simply have to know that God has made us a promise. And no matter how uh, uh, immense the problem may be, no matter how substantial the challenge may be, we need to take God at his word. And we need to know that we are going to be victorious because of Christ. The psalmist David said, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for thou art with me. The beautiful thing about that word is he says, I'm going through it. I'm not stuck in it. I'm not going to perish here. I go through the valleys and the shadow of death, which means there's a better day awaiting us on the other side. 
We have victory awaiting each and every one of us as we continue to put our trust and our confidence in God. And he is trustworthy because he's never failed us and he's never failed anyone. The promises that God has made, he's going to keep each and every day. We can trust in God in every circumstance to be all sufficient. Whatever the circumstances of your life may be today, his grace is all sufficient. And the word of God lets us know that even if we get to a point where we don't see a way out and will not experience that way out with all of our efforts and all of our uh, 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 strivings to uh, accomplish that. And the word of God says, if when we get to that point, we can do nothing else, God will provide for us a way of escape. But he's not going to allow us to suffer loss at any cost whatsoever. Because if he does, then his word becomes invalid. And if the word is invalid, then we can choose to do what we choose to do. So the word of God is true, and God is obligated by the promise he made in his word to keep his promise and to give you that which he has promised along the way. God is in control. We have to learn to trust him according to his word. According to his word, not according to how we feel. According to his word, not according to what we see. According to his word, not according to what we hear. We have to learn to trust him according to his word, that he is able to take care of each and every one of us. We are loved by him. And there's nobody who loves you like Jesus. Because there's nobody who has sacrificed for you like Jesus. There's no one who has given of himself like Jesus has. You know, the unique thing about mankind today is we make all kinds of promises. And we make promises based upon what we want from the individual. And we know many times when we make a promise, it can't be kept. It's like in politics. When you hear a politician tell you he'll do this, that, and the other for you, many times the politician knows he can't do it. He promises you to do it. And then he goes before his constituents presents the situation knowing it will be turned down so that he can go back to you and say, well, I did my best. But in the meantime, he got your vote and your support. Let's not be foolish in, in, in our thinking and in our reasoning. We don't have to barter with God and, and, and uh, make uh, promises with God, and he will never make a promise to us that he cannot keep. If God says he's going to do it, it's done already. You simply have to step into the time frame that God has promised. Jesus calls us and talks to us and challenges us to look and to see how God has provided for us and for all of his creation. The Bible lets us know that God even takes care of the sparrows and the lilies of the field. And if he's going to look after a sparrow and some flowers, how much more is he going to look after us? When you consider the fact that he created us in his image for his glory and for his likeness, when you consider the fact that we have an opportunity to sit in the presence of the Lord and uh, converse with him and receive from him the power and the strength we need to be victorious each and every day, we are truly a blessed people. And as we sit in the presence of the Lord, as we entertain him each and every day in our hearts and in our lives, he's going to enable us to be more than conquerors. You see, because the Bible says that we are to seek first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness. So the first thing you must do in life is to align yourself with the will of God. Not with what you think, not with what other people think, but align yourself with the word of God. And if we seek first his kingdom, the word of God says all that is necessary to make life complete will be added unto each and every one of us. I would rather have the blessings of God than the luck of the world. I would rather know that the blessings of God are overtaking me each and every day than anything else in this life. Because the blessings of God are suited for me and for my challenges each and every day better than anything else. You see, luck runs out. If you've ever seen a dead cat laying on the highway, the cat that's supposed to have a thousand lives or nine lives or whatever the number of lives people say the cat has, that means they all ran out. We don't have to worry about that because the God we serve is a God who gives life eternal. And in this life, he will teach us how to live and how to serve him. And when we leave this life, we go from labor to reward. We go from being present in the world to being present in the paradise of the Lord. 
and we go to receive the reward that God has for those who put their trust and confidence in him. And in the meantime, all that I need, his hand is providing. If I need hunger, food for hunger, he's providing. If I need water for thirst, he's providing. If I need health for the body, he's providing. Whatever I need, God's got it just for me. And in the sovereignty of God, I'm confident that he's got the best in store for me if I continue to put my trust in him. So by prayer and supplication and with thanksgiving, that's what the word of God says. By prayer, by supplication, and with thanksgiving. How do we pray when we are anxious and burdened by life's vicissitudes? Well, we simply cry out to Abba Father. We cry out to the God who knows us better than we know ourselves. He knows our uprisings, our downsettings. He knows our temperament. He knows our vulnerabilities and weaknesses. And he has given us the power of the Holy Spirit to enable us to be more than conquerors, to overcome in every wild and situation that we experience in this life today. There's no reason for any child of God to suffer defeat at the hands of the enemy if they have God in their lives. Because if God be for us, who can be against us? If God is on our side, the word of God already lets us know what our position is. It tells us that we are more than conquerors. And I'd rather be more than a conqueror through him that loved and gave himself for me than to be anything else in this life today. He is clearly the rock of our salvation. He's the firm bedrock upon which we've established and built our lives. We can weather any storm that Satan will bring in our direction when we stand in affirmative position with the Lord Jesus Christ. We learn to pray before the storms will assail us. The one thing the Lord wants us to do more than anything else is to build a day-by-day -day intimate relationship with him, to walk by faith, not by sight. If you allow what you see to be the determining factor in your prayer life, you're not going to pray much. But if you see God in the midst of all things, as you sought him first and his righteousness, you learn that prayer simply keeps you connected to the power source. And if you're connected to your power source, you will be victorious. We learn to pray before the storms. You see, there are many people in the body of Christ who only pray when they're in trouble. And I have a theory concerning that. I believe that the Lord allows trouble into many of our lives so that we will have fellowship with him. If things are going well and we don't pray and we don't go to church, we don't participate in uh, Bible studies and other growth factors, and the Lord wants to entertain you and wants you to be in his presence, if he knows trouble is the thing that keeps you close to him, he will allow a little bit of trouble in your life just so that he can love on you, so that he can teach you. And what he wants to teach you more than anything else is that he's got you in the hollow of his hand, in the center of his will, and under the blood. When Satan comes against you like a flood, it's the Lord himself who lifts up the standard and enables you to know that you're going to be more than a conqueror. He is the rock of our salvation. We have sought him in prayer. We recognize that in prayer, he gives us warnings that the storms are assembling around us. And as we hear this word, as we recognize and receive that word, as we pray, we are fortified so that when the storm does hit, we're still standing after the elements have attacked us. Read God's word. The word of God is a lamp unto our feet. It's a light unto our path. Plan a constant time for prayer in your daily schedule. I'm going to challenge you not to find time to pray. I will say that again. I'm going to challenge you not to find time to pray. Well, pastor, if I don't find time to pray, what am I supposed to do? You're supposed to make time to pray. When your schedule is busy and you find time, God gets what's left. But when you make time to pray, then prayer becomes a prerequisite within your life. I think the best way to begin any day is to spend a few minutes or some time with God in prayer. The best way to continue throughout the day is to take some time in the middle of your day and entertain him, speaking to him. And then at the end of the day when you come home, you should spend some time giving thanks to God for his hand of protection upon you in the course of the day. Do you know how many people leave their homes in the morning and never make it home at night? Accidents befall them. 
situations and circumstances far beyond their control overtake them sometime in the course of that day, and they never make it home again. So if the Lord wakes you up, clothes you, keeps you in your right mind, sends you out of your house, protects you each and every day, and brings you back into the home at the end of the day, the least you can do is take some time out and give him thanks and give him praise. Because the angels of the Lord encamp round about those that fear him. So you didn't make it home because you were slick. You made it home because God's presence prepared the way for you and goodness and mercy followed you. And the angels that encamped round about you kept Satan and his emissaries away from you so that you could get home again and give God some praise. Can I get a witness? Amen. That's really what it's all about. So don't find time to pray. I learned in my life if I found time to pray, he would only get seconds out of the whole day. But if I make time to pray, then he gets quality time. And true prayer is not you simply giving God your shopping list. True prayer is spending time in his presence, quiet before him, and giving him an opportunity to respond to you and to speak into your heart and into your life. We need to see to it that that's the way we are. Because when you're found in a storm and you feel that the circumstances are too great for you to bear, don't worry about a thing because God's got you where he wants you. At a time like this, what can you do? Well, you can go to your secret place. When your back is against the wall, you can go to your secret place. You can go to your prayer closet, as it were. You can go to that rendezvous spot that you have with the Lord and pour your heart out to him and petition him for grace, mercy, and help in your time of need. If you have that place, make sure it's well used. Make sure it's threadbare. Make sure you know that this is your meeting place with the Lord. You know how it is when you have good friends in this life, you have a special place where you hook up? Meet me at the restaurant. Meet me here. Meet me there. You don't even have to say the name of it because the people that you're talking to know that that's your spot. But we need to have that spot with the Lord. We need to have that intimate place where we can go and address him at any time. And we need to make that time. That needs to be one of the disciplines in our lives. That we have made time to seek the Lord while he may be found and to call upon him while he is near. You go to the word of God. And the word of God should be not only in print, but it should be hidden in your heart as well. You should commit passages of scripture to memory. So that when you don't have your Bible but Satan is coming against you. The word of God that is in you will rise up and increase your faith and cause you to trust God and believe God for the things that God has promised. This is where you gain your strength, and uh, this is where you begin to believe God for his promises. Faith comes when you feed on God's word. Now I encourage people when they're reading their Bibles in their home devotion or wherever your secret closet is, I encourage them to read the Word of God out loud. Don't just follow it with your eyes. Read it out loud. And the reason I encourage them to do that is because when you read the Word of God out loud, it not only goes into your eye gate, but it goes into your ear gate, and from there it goes into your heart. And the Word of the Lord in Romans ten seventeen says, Faith comes by hearing, and that by hearing the Word of God. So that being true, when you speak the Word of God in the midst of your devotional time, it helps to increase your faith to believe God for the things that he has promised because the word of God declares that to be so. When we pray, we pray in faith believing that God hears us. I would not pray to a God that I did not believe hears me. I wouldn't pray to a deaf individual. I would pray for a deaf individual, but I wouldn't pray to a deaf individual. And because I know that God hears my prayer, I can speak to him in the full confidence that he is going to not only hear my prayer, but he's going to operate in my best interest. Because the Bible tells me all things work together for good to those who love the Lord and are the called according to his purpose. Amen. And I'm confident that when I pray in faith, believing God, he hears me and he will answer my prayer. Now, the whole thing about the answer that comes from God is it may not always be what I'm looking for. Because there are times I want God to take me to the left, and he says, no, I'm taking you to the right. There are times I want God to advance me, and he says, no, I want you to stay where you are. But I'm confident that when he gives me instruction, he knows what's in my best interest. 
For he's the God who knows what yesterday was, what today is, and what tomorrow shall be. And if I put my trust in him, he's going to get me to that destination in safety in the fullness of his time. So we have to pray, though, in faith, believing that God hears us. We've got to pray in faith, believing that he will answer our cry, our petition, our prayer. And uh, we know him to be a loving father. And a loving father listens to the cry of his children when they bring their petitions to him. Another songwriter said, Sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer that calls me from a world of care and bids me at my father's throne make all my wants and wishes known. In seasons of distress and grief, my soul has often found relief. So we know that when we go to God in prayer, he hears us. And he answers us, and he comforts us, and he strengthens us. And sometimes he will chide us. He will bring correction to our lives. He will let us know where we are deviating from the path, where we are missing the mark, where we are not coming up to that which he expects of us as his children. But in the meantime, we know him to be a loving father. He doesn't come with us to us with a belt all the time. He comes, with us, he comes to us with arms open wide, and he comes to receive us and to love us. And the word of God that brings correction is a word of love. The psalmist David himself said, it was a good thing that I was afflicted. We don't see it when we're going through. When we come out of our affliction and when we realize what we've learned in the midst of what we've gone through, we can say it was good that I was afflicted. Amen. When we pray, we pray in faith, believing that he hears us and he will answer us. And I know today that he's a prayer hearing, prayer answering God. How about you? Do you know, have you experienced God's answering many of your prayers and your petitions? Well, if he did it yesterday, he can do it today. And if he does it today, he can do it tomorrow. Because he's our ever-present help in our time of trouble. We should always pray with expectation. We should always pray with thanksgiving. Again, if I don't expect anything to happen, why would I waste my time praying? But because I know he hears me. Because I know he has my best interest at heart. Because I know he only wants what's, what's good for me. I can pray to God with the full expectation and with thanksgiving. Thanksgiving means uh, I'm not waiting for uh, what I petitioned you for to come. I'm thanking you because I know it will come in the fullness of your time. And we thank God for that. It's an act of faith believing that God listens to our prayers and will answer us according to his perfect will. And you see, the problem with many of us today is we are not in the perfect will of God. We're in the way that seems right to us. And when we're in that position, we expect God to answer us, to deliver us, to provide for us, to bless us, to shield us, whatever the case might be. But we're not where we need to be to receive what God has in store for us. But when we get into that place, that place, that center of God's will, when we are in the hollow of his hand, when we're in the center of his will, then everything that God does, we can celebrate for him for and know that he's given us the best that he desires for us. When we're in that place, each and every day of our lives, we can say, I will bless the Lord at all times. Amen. And it concludes by letting us know that the peace of God the peace of Jesus Christ is what we are dealing with. He is the Prince of Peace. He brings peace like no one else can. He's the originator of peace. So in the midst of confusion, you can actually rest in the confidence that God's got it just for you. One of the good witnesses of his being the Prince of Peace is when he was traveling uh, in the ship with his disciples and the storm arose in the midst of the sea. They were fearful, bailing water, trying to keep the ship on the right side of the water. They were doing everything they could to make sure they would get to the other side. And, and where was Jesus? The Bible says he was on board, but he was fast asleep. Why was he asleep? Was he not worried? No, he wasn't worried. How come? He had nothing to worry about. Why not? Because he's the Prince of Peace. He was on a mission, and God the Father was not going to allow him to suffer loss before his mission was completed. When you are in the will of God, and you're doing what God has commanded you to do, 
you have the Prince of Peace abiding in your life. So you don't have to worry about what things look like. You don't have to worry about what's taking place in your life. You simply have to know that God is with me. And if the Lord is with me, his rod and staff will comfort me. And he has even prepared a table before you in the presence of your enemies. So that they will see what God does for those who put their trust and their confidence in him. And Philippians 4 and uh, 7 says, His peace is not of this world. His peace is a peace that passes all understanding and it guards our heart and our mind in Christ Jesus. I want my heart to be guarded. I want my mind to be guarded. Because you know, what the devil does is he attacks your mind. And then he gives you heart trouble concerning the things of God. He causes you to doubt God. And to believe that God is not operating in your best interest. The, the devil is the one that says, if God loves you, why does he allow you to go through what you're going through? And I say to you today, God allows it in our lives to sharpen us. And to empower us. And to mature us. So that we can stand in the face of any adversary. And let them know, God is your hope of glory through Jesus Christ. And he's given you all that is necessary to be victorious in all of the battles that you will fight in this life today. It is imperative that our hearts be steadfast in keeping faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't allow a circumstance to determine whether or not you're going to trust God. Don't allow a circumstance to determine whether or not you're going to praise God. I will bless the Lord at all times. Now, I don't thank God for trouble. I don't thank God for tests. I don't thank God for sickness. I don't thank God for the negative things. But I thank him in the negative things that he's with me. I thank God that when I am assailed by Satan, he's with me. He's my ever-present help in my time of trouble. And if I put my confidence and trust in him, I will prevail. Our minds must be set and focused on the Lord. Stop looking at your problem and start looking at the God who's provided for you. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. The things of the earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. And the things that God has promised you, he will deliver in the fullness of his time. We don't like God's timing because God's timing takes us through and we want out. We don't like God's timing because God's timing may be slower than we would anticipate. But we need to learn to wait upon the Lord. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They will mount up with wings as eagles. They will run and not be weary. They will walk and not faint. That's the position we need to be in. To put our trust and confidence in God every step of the way. We have to be steadfast. Keeping faith and trust in the Lord. And our minds have to be set and focused on him. Paul tells us that the spirit of fear works against our mind. But in 2 Timothy 1 and 7, it tells us God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power of love and of a sound mind. When your mind is sound, it does not vacillate. It does not drift. When it's sound, you put your trust and confidence in the word and the promise of God, and you ride out the storms knowing that the end of the storm has victory awaiting you. We walk by faith, not by sight, and we trust God. God comes to us and gives us boldness and sound minds. Many times we recognize that a warrior, in order to become a victor, must have clarity of mind, boldness of heart, in order to be effective in fighting the mortal, the mortal enemy that they face. And that's the, way it is, that's the way it is with us today. If we're going to be victorious, we have to have clarity of mind. We can't be double-minded because double-minded people are unstable in all their ways. We have to be bold and be strong and be powerful because the Lord our God is with us. And if we recognize this, he will give us what it takes to be effective in fighting the enemy that surrounds us each and every day. And uh, if you do these things, you become the warrior that God has called you to be and you will be fully equipped with the helmet of salvation with the breastplate of righteousness, with the sword of the Spirit, and with all of the weapons that are necessary to successfully defeat Satan. 
She, the, the devil doesn't care about, care about the fact that you've got a praying mother or a praying grandmother or a praying husband or a praying wife. The devil could care less about that. He just doesn't want you to pray. Because if he can keep you from praying and seeking God, he can keep you defeated. We need to learn to know God for ourselves. We need to learn where we can go to be in touch with him and stay in touch with him so that we can be conquerors and not conquered. As we pray and as we bring our needs to the Lord, he will cause his peace, which passes all understanding to guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. I would tell you today that that is one of the most blessed positions to be in, to know that your life is hidden with Christ in God, to know, to recognize, and to understand that no matter what situation befalls you in this life today, you can have peace in troubled times knowing that God has already worked out your future. Nothing has escaped him, not one detail. If he knows how many hairs are on your head, if he knows that intimate level of detail concerning you, then you should have the confidence to believe that nothing is too hard for God. And if God has made your promise, he's going to keep it to the letter of his promise. As the musicians come forward, I want you to put your trust in the Lord. I want you to seek him wholeheartedly and fully. And I want you to know that God is going to give you everything that he has promised. You may say, well, I've messed up so many times. I've missed the mark so many times. I've missed out on my opportunity. I want you to know this. According to the word of God, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. It doesn't matter how many times you've done this, that, or the other. What really matters is are you contrite? Are you genuine in your desire to be forgiven? Are you sincere in your desire to walk in newness of life with the Lord Jesus Christ? Are you willing to forsake sin and cleave to righteousness? Are you willing to put the past behind you and under the blood and let God give you new steps and a new life that will honor him and glorify him in every way? If so, then everything you desire from the Lord is waiting for you at the altar. The altar, not the rail across the front of the church, but at the altar of your heart, where you can bow your head and petition him with your mouth and say, Lord, forgive me. Make me your child. If this is your desire, he'll do it just for you. And I want to challenge you as you're listening right now to make a choice, to make a decision. I have decided to make Jesus my choice. I don't want the riches of this world. I want the power of God in my life that will enable me to be a conqueror and not conquered, a victor and not a victim, a winner and not a loser, a believer and not a skeptic. If this is where you are today, then give God an opportunity to do for you what only he can do, save you and deliver you. As I pray, if this is what your desire is, then in your own way, simply ask the Lord to forgive you of your sins to cleanse you from all unrighteousness, and to give you a new life, a new heart, a new determination, a new walk, and he'll do it for you. Because he said in his word, if you come to him, he will not cast you away. You will find rest for your soul. Heavenly Father, I pray for each person who's been impacted by this message today. And I pray by the power of the Holy Spirit that you forgive them of their sins, cleanse them from all unrighteousness, I pray that you'd create within them a, a new heart, a clean heart, and give them a right spirit. I pray that they will hunger and thirst for the righteousness of God. I pray that they will have the strength and the fortitude to say to Satan, no more. You had me. I belong to Jesus now. And I'm going to serve him for the rest of my life. Help us in the midst of all of the chaos that is taking place in this world around us today. Help us not to become weary in the midst of our well-doing. Help us not to so be in, in, enmeshed in what's taking place around us that it clouds our view and our perspective of who you are and what you want to do for us. Help us in every way to be the people you want us to be. As I said at the beginning, strengthen those who are weak. Give direction to those who seek it. 
Give voice to those who have been timid. Give boldness to those who have been fearful. And enable us to rejoice in you, the God of our salvation. Make of us meet for the master's use. And we will thank you for what you're going to do because we ask it in faith and believing. Amen and amen. If you are determined to be all that God would have you to be, then today I would simply challenge you to put your trust and confidence in God. Find a place where you can go consistently, where you can fellowship with people of like faith and like commitment, where you can believe God for the things that he's promised to do for you. And as you walk together in covenant agreement, God will do some tremendous things on your behalf. At this time, I'm going to challenge you to prepare for the communion. This is the first Sunday, and as is our, uh, our tradition, as is our custom, as is our discipline and our practice, on the first Sunday of every month, we gather together and uh, we partake of the Lord's emblems. Now, it's been impossible since uh, the month of March for us to be together under one roof. But our hearts should be united. Our soul, our mind, our spirit should be united. And as we've come together in these clusters, we're believing God that he's going to do some great things for us. Amen? I'm getting ready to read from the Gospel of Matthew, the 26th chapter. But before I do, I'm going to get my emblems so I can participate in the service. Matthew chapter 26. Now when the even was come, he sat down with the twelve. And as they did eat, he said, Verily I say unto you, that one of you shall betray me. And they were exceeding sorrowful, and began every one of them to say unto him, Lord, is it I? And he answered and said, He that dips his hand with me in the dish, the same shall betray me. The Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe unto that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It had been good for that man if he had not been born. Then Judas, which betrayed him, answered and said, Master, is it I? And he said unto him, Thou hast said. And as they were eating, Jesus took the bread and blessed it, and broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup and gave thanks, and he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the uh, remission of sins. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out into the Mount of Olives. Heavenly Father, as we prepare to partake of these emblems, it is our prayer that we will recognize they are simply emblems. They do not actually become your blood and your body, but they are representatives. The bread being the representative of your, of your body and the wine being the representative of your blood, which is shed for many for the remission of sin. As we partake, let it be healing for the nation. Let it be strength and power and direction for those who seek it from you. Let it be that bond which connects us with you more intimately and more solidly as we are going to live this life in a manner that will reflect the fact that we belong to you and you belong to us. Help us to be all that you've saved us and raised us to be. Help us not to miss the mark but to fulfill the purpose for which you have called us into existence. And we'll thank you for the uh, conclusion as we ask it in your name with thanksgiving. Amen and amen. The word of the Lord says Jesus took the wafer or the bread, blessed it and broke it, and said to his disciples, take, eat, this is my body. The blood that Jesus shed for me all the way at Calvary. Think about what Jesus did for you. Think about the price he paid for your redemption. Think about the sacrifice he made when he left the portals of glory and came down into a wicked world to live as a man, to suffer as a man, to die as a man, and then to be raised triumphantly as the Christ, the Son of the living God. 
He did it for us because we could not do it for ourselves. We wallowed in sin until Jesus came and paid the price. But today we are the sons and daughters of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. For the word of God says, when we see him, we shall be like him, for we will see him as he is. He took the cup, and he gave thanks, and he said to the disciples, drink all of it. For this is my blood which is shed for many for the remission of sin. And the blood he shed, he shed it where? Way back on Calvary, it was the blood that gives me strength, strength from day, day to day. wherever you are. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank God. The blood shall never lose its power. God bless you. We love you. Thanks for being a part of this service today. All right. That was a great message from our bishop. And um, one point that I really wanted that really stuck out to me was when he read Psalms 23.4. And it says, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will, not, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. So in these current times, with all the health uh, issues that some of our family members may have, joblessness, it's really good to know that if we seek him and we rest on him, that we can get through. Because the scripture says, as we walk through, not stay as the bishop so eloquently stated in his message, as we walk through, not stay. So as long as we rest on these scriptures, it'll definitely let us get through these times. So that definitely resonated with me. So uh, just remember, let's seek him. And as this message touched me, maybe it, maybe it touched you, and maybe it touched somebody that you may know or they may need it for encouragement. So we do have social media and we can use it in this manner. So share it on your thread, maybe privately at somebody or connect them to it to give them encouragement in this time. So remember, we have Instagram, we have Facebook. Uh, we're on YouTube if you want to watch it there and we're on Facebook if you want to watch it there. So we have all bases covered. So please join us in that fashion. Share, share, share and subscribe so you get updates whenever we have new things, new news and new messages that you might want to take for yourself or continue to give out to the public or those that may need it. Now, I wanted to let you know that Bethel at this point right now, our doors are still closed. So continue to use our social media for access and to see how you can, in, uh, can incorporate us into your, into your week and into your month. And lastly, we're going to close out in prayer. And I just want to thank you for tuning in and you'll see us next week. And there'll be a familiar face hosting next week. All right, let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity again to join you through your word through your message, through your praise, and through your worship. We ask to continue to keep us safe throughout this week. We ask you, Lord God, to continue to bless us throughout this week until we meet again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.